275 years ago, a community of Christians called a pastor and covenanted to love God and to love their neighbors. 275 years ago, the community of the First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, Bristol, Connecticut, was formed. Moving forward in faith, we continue to be a community that welcomes all, nurtures all, and changes the world with Christ's love. In God's spirit of extravagant love, I welcome you to worship with the First Congregational Church in Bristol, Connecticut, an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. My name is the Reverend Kristen Kleiman. Please call me Kristen. Whether you are a longtime attender or this is your first service, whether you are worshiping live or later, whether you are in the sanctuary or online, you belong to God and you belong to this Christian community. In honor of FCC's 275 years of ministry, we are collecting 275 cans of fruit this month to share with our food insecure neighbors in the Bristol area. And I want to thank everyone who donated cereal last week, uh, last month. It was a lot of cereal. For those worshiping online, I look forward to interacting with you through the comment section on Facebook. And you may share prayers in the comment section right now or contact me throughout the week. And now we actually have an announcement this morning, so Alan is going to share. Oh, good morning. My name is Alan Marco. I'm the moderator, and uh, I am currently reading a wonderful biography of Buster Keaton, who was a famous acrobat and slapstick comedian in both vaudeville and in silent movies. I've got to tell you, watching me climb those stairs just now was worth the price of admission. Is he going to fall? Is he going to make it? <sighs> and I've got to go back down. But I'm up here today to recruit folks to be ushers. We... Um, Need folks, the, it's a, not that difficult a job. It's mainly making sure folks have programs uh, on communion Sundays. You could help with making sure folks get the, uh, the things that we're using for communion right now. So if you are interested in being an usher, I will be down uh, in the atrium area. That's the kind of lobby back here after the service assuming I make it down those stairs, and you can sign up. Thank you. I think the extra obstacles of the balloons and... <laughs> Our church community has a lot of events going on this coming month of April. Holy Week begins next Sunday with Palm Sunday, and the sermon, the message, will be participatory with craft supplies. So I hope that intrigues you. So if you are online, I invite you, at the very least, to have a piece of paper and a pen or pencil for the sermon next week. And there'll be more details in the messenger and the bulletin. There will also be services of worship on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, and an Easter crafts and lunch on Saturday, April 16th, with Easter worship on the 17th, and the Easter egg hunt and fellowship to follow on the front lawn. The Sunday after that is one of my favorites, Holy Humor Sunday. In addition to telling jokes, uh, because the resurrection is the greatest joke God ever played on the devil, I also am going to invite you this year to send me your funny animal pictures. So I've already started to get a few. And then I had a thought that, you know, on Easter people wear Easter bonnets. Maybe on Holy Humor Sunday, we could wear some funny hats. And you know that that's because I have a funny hat that I want to wear. That day is very busy. So April 24th will also be followed, worship will be followed by a tree planting. And we are going to unearth the time capsule from 1982 and bury a new time capsule. 
and we're also hosting a COVID vaccination clinic that day. Lots going on in April. I also want to lift up from your bulletin that the Family Promise Basketball Tournament is coming up and update you that it will only be on April 9th. I also want to remind our confirmands that class this afternoon is in person at 3 o'clock and their families are invited to join us at 4 o'clock for a special activity. And we begin our praise of God today with a time of centering, an opportunity to open our hearts and minds to God's holy presence. So I invite you to take three deep, slow breaths Breathing in God's love, breathing in God's peace, breathing in God's joy. invite you to join me in our call to worship as printed in the bulletin. God's steadfast love is forever. Looking back, moving forward, always we give glory to you, God. Thank you. 
how the Lord's Prayer is printed in our bulletin. Holy God, forgive us when we cling to old ways. Forgive us when we don't see the new you are doing in our lives and in the world. Help us when we are nervous about moving forward. We pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are precious to God. God created us. God calls us by name. God loves us. Even when we are afraid, even when we are unsure about the next step, even when we are slow to trust, God loves and forgives us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the scripture reading this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah, despite the fact that it says it's a psalm reading, and it is selected verses from the 43rd chapter of Isaiah. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. Do not remember the former things, or consider the things of old, for I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. <laughs>
to invite everyone to participate in the baptism to come forward. Okay, there's one right back there. I used to do that all the time. I'd be like a stewardess. I'd be like, there's bathrooms here, there's bathrooms there. You see it right up there. Owen Daniel, precious child of God, it is my honor to baptize you into the Christian faith. Today you become a member of the wider Christian community, except into the care of Christ Church. Today you begin your life as Christ's disciple, called to make our world a better place with Christ's love. Through the water, words, and actions of this sacrament of baptism, you are blessed with the Holy Spirit and God's grace and unconditional love. However, I know that you've known God's unconditional love long before today. From before you were even born, God was with you. God was loving you. Through you, God made a miracle happen. Yeah? And we thank God for the miracle that is you. And on this year, Baptism Day, we commit our love to you, promising to nurture you so you can fulfill the plans God has for you. And we pray that when you are sad because snack time is over, I hear that makes you sad, or when you are happy because someone's going to pick you up to cuddle you, in all the times of your life, may you know that God is with you, loving you and inviting you to be God's love in the world. And so now I'm going to talk to your parents for a little while. You have brought this beloved child of God here to receive the sacrament of Christian baptism. As a sign of your faith response, I ask you to make the following promises. Do you desire to have your child baptized into the faith of Jesus Christ and this Christian community? Are you going to stay with us? Stay with us. No, okay. We you nurture this child and these children's Christian faith journey by teaching them the stories of our faith and fostering in them an appreciation for God's word and the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. We you encourage all of your children to learn from the wisdom of the prophets, doing justice, loving mercy, and walking humbly with God. Will you actively support this child and all the children in your life as they walk the ways of Jesus Christ by making sure they participate in the worship and fellowship of a faith community, by praying with and for your child, by teaching them by your own role model to use their gifts to stand with the least of these, caring for the earth and all of its people and creatures? Will you journey with your child to discover the wonder of God's love and encourage him to be curious and questioning about our Christian faith so that he may grow up to be the faithful disciple of Jesus Christ that God calls him to be, claiming our faith as his own through the rite of confirmation. And do you, who stand as sponsors and godparents, promise to love and support this child in his life and faith journey? Do you promise to support and pray for these parents as they nurture their children in Christ's love? Jesus calls all of us to welcome all in love and to nurture all in love. Do you, who witness and celebrate the sacrament, promise your love, support, and care to this child being baptized here today? Please join me from our bulletin. As your brothers and sisters in Christ, we promise our love, support, and care. And having heard the promises made this day, do you recommit yourselves to the faith and way of Jesus Christ that you might be role models to this child and all the children of our world, sharing the good news of Christ's love with your words and with your actions. If so, please say, we do. Okay. I know you're like, socks, tie, it's all good. I'm going to pray over the water. Do you like water? Yeah? Let's see. Holy, amazing God, we ask your Holy Spirit to come upon this water and make it holy for our baptizing purposes. 
We pray that as you bless Owen, as you bless his family and his community, that he might know every day your unconditional love in his life and that he might show in his way your unconditional love to others. So please bless this water with Holy Spirit and with love. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. I closed my eyes and you got both socks off. That was awesome. That was awesome. Can I put water on your forehead? Yeah. By what name shall this child be baptized? Oh, and Daniel, I baptize you in the name of God, the Father who created you. I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son who redeemed you. I baptize you in the name of the Holy Spirit who sustains you in love forevermore. Amen. Is that good? Maybe, maybe. You will not remember this day, but your older brothers and sisters are going to remember this day, and hopefully they're going to tell you about it, and all of your family. But we have a certificate I'm going to give to Dad. <laughs> and we have a little cross that says, let the little children come to me. And it's not a toy, so we're going to just put it up someplace really high from all but the tallest of your children. So, um, so you guys can look at the cross and you can point to it and you can say to Owen, that's to remind you that God loves you and God blesses you. And now we're going to let you go sit down. I invite all of you to stand and wave and pass the peace of Jesus Christ. The peace of Christ be with you. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, 
gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You sang in a stable, you cried from a hill, then you whispered in silence when the whole world was still. And down in the city, you called once again when you blew through your people on the rush of the wind. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind wind on the sea you call from tomorrow you break ancient schemes from the bondage of sorrow the captives dream dreams our women see visions our men clear their eyes with all new decisions, your people arise. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, Spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. I invite you to be seated. Once upon a time, there were three churches, all who had been rooted in their communities for more than a century, all with historic landmark buildings, all seeing less people attending as the community and world around them changed in significant ways. All three churches were aware that the way that they had been church for the past decades was no longer as successful as it once was. And that made all three churches feel pretty anxious. The first church dealt with their anxiety by sticking to what they knew. Perhaps paralyzed by fear, they resisted any and all new ideas. They pushed aside any best practices they might have learned from others. And although exhausted and not getting the results they hoped for, they kept doing the tasks that those before them had always done, even though their hearts weren't in it. The second church went in the opposite direction. They looked at the non-denominational megachurch across town. And despite never being a congregation that was much into music, they took the resources that they had been using for their thrift shop, and they used that money to create a praise band for a new contemporary worship service. When attendance at that service was not what they had hoped for, they looked again to the megachurch for ideas. The third church was in the same situation as the first two churches. Their congregation was getting older. They had fewer and fewer children and youth in worship. The demographics of their community were changing in significant ways. And despite reading books together and attending conferences and trying a little new here and a little new there, there seemed no magic formula for church growth and revitalization. So aware of their anxiety, and yet not controlled by their anxiety, the church looked back so it could move forward in faith. 
The church told stories about their past and reminded themselves why they had become a church in the first place and grounded in their founding purpose, connected to God and Jesus Christ, they found new ways to be church. And that church is us. Our present circumstances as individuals and as a church are incredibly anxious. Life is tough right now. I don't need to tell you how tough your life is. And I don't need to tell you how tough church life is. We have a lot of worries. And we also have God. We have God who carried this congregation through 275 years of ministry. And they haven't been easy years. Think about what it must have been like to be Christ Church during the Revolutionary War, fought here on this soil all around us, or to be Christ Church during the Civil War when Bristol's economy was tied to the South. Those must have been tough, divisive times. Yet God carried us through, as God did through the pandemic of 1918 and multiple economic recessions, including the Great Depression. Every day, every day, God says to us, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. In your everyday life, you may not be passing through waters or rivers or walking through fire. Still, we all have our times when we are journeying through overwhelming circumstances. And God is there. God is with us. We trust in that good news as a community of faith. We trust that God is with us, that God has called us by name, that we belong to God, and that God will guide and protect us. And it is this belief that enables us to move forward in faith, to vision a future with hope for ourselves, for our children, for our church community, and the world. And as we move forward into this future of hope, we need to be true to who we are as a church community. In his book, And the Church Actually Changed, that really is the title of it, Graham Standish writes, all churches have a history that needs to be honored. That history is a soil out of which they can grow new fruit. We can't just assume any seed will work. We have to be careful about what we plant and how we nourish. You don't plant a beautiful cactus on good soil with plenty of water, and you don't plant a flowering apple tree in desert sand. As we move into our future, there are some ministries that are just not going to work for us. They're not in our church's DNA. Others will, though. Other ministries that are grounded in our guiding purpose of loving God and loving our neighbors by providing for their physical and spiritual needs, by building a community of care for God's people. Now, I imagine that 275 years ago, this meant gathering the community for fellowship and meals. As we hopefully move past this pandemic, could it look like that again? Could our future include community dinners? to feed people's bodies as we also offer community and connection. For 275 years, the First Congregational Church has provided the wider community with a place to gather. In the beginning, it was for town-wide meetings and for voting, as well as worship. In more recent years, we have provided space for groups like Debtors Anonymous and Al-Anon, as well as for families gathering for birthdays and baptisms and anniversaries and memorial services. As banquet halls have gone out of business during the pandemic and companies have given up their office spaces, could God be calling us to expand our ministry of welcome and hospitality by creating a dedicated ministry to provide conference and reception space? As we move into our future, though, the most important thing to remember is that we are more than a historic building. We are more than a social club. We are even more than a service organization. We are the church of Jesus Christ, a community called to praise God and to transform lives with the Holy Spirit, helping all people, including ourselves, 
hear God's still speaking voice and experience God's presence and grace. And grounded in our founding purpose, planting in the soil that is us, we will find new ways to do this. We might expand the styles of music we use in worship. We might create a new style of worship service or build on the Connecting with God movement worship service I created in the summer of 2020 and posted on YouTube. We might even create more prayer spaces around FCC's building or perhaps build a labyrinth prayer walk outside. We might become a community that in addition to beginning each meeting with prayer also sits in silence with the expectation that God is moving in our midst. Once upon a time, there was a church, the historic landmark building, rooted in their community for 275 years and grounded in their deep faith in God. As their community and worlds changed around them, they were at times anxious, and they took that anxiety to God in prayer. They knew that God had called them by name. They trusted God to walk with them through any and all circumstances, and they lived with expectation. They lived with the expectation that God was going to be, continue to be present with them, showing up in the most amazing ways, and through them, making the world a better place. Once upon a time, there was a church that looked back, but they didn't go back. They move forward in hope, they move forward in trust, they move forward in faith. And what a blessing it is to be that church. Amen. I invite you to join me now in a time of listening and discernment. The world is so busy and chaotic that this is our opportunity to just put aside a little time to have the expectation that God is going to be present with us. This is not a time of silence, because we never know how God is speaking to us. And um, sometimes it comes in birds chattering, and sometimes it comes in kids talking, and sometimes it comes in a cell phone ring. We never know. Let us be in a time of listening to God's still speaking voice. Gracious Lord, continue to guide us and to be with us and to help us know which direction you are calling us to go to make our world a better place for all. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you now into a time of prayer where we can share together our joys and our concerns. And um, we offer continual healing prayers for Alex and Missy and James and Maddie and Turner. And Pam and Gary and Lisa R and Abby. Um, Abby, Elaine, Robert, and David, who are all going through cancer treatments. Other prayers people would like to offer? For Marge and for son Mike. We do. We continue to pray for Michael and for Vicki as they are caring for Michael's mother, Marge, who um, post surgery, it's not that miraculous recovery, but we just pray every day for her medical staff as they are. Um, doing their best to support her, and we pray for her family as they are supporting her. Wallet. Good. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Hi. I'm for your mother? Yeah. Mary? Okay. My father? For your father? Okay.
Wonderful. Okay, we will raise all those prayers for your mother, for your father, and for your wonderful, helpful staff. Yeah, and for Sister Mary. Yeah, it's an amazing man right there. Stu. For Alex's continuous re continual recovery, and for Anne, who's I looked up celebrating her birthday tomorrow. Yay! Twenty nine forever. <laughs> Roger. Continue for Ukraine. For the Ukraine, for the people of Ukraine, for all of our refugees. For Andrew recovering from the flu, and for your for your whole household as you are having transition in it these days. <laughs> we pray for you. Mary. For John, who's undergoing cancer surgery next week, and for all who are going to have surgery next week. Tom. I'm grateful for the prayers for my grandson, Turner. Uh, we had lots of problems with the two surgeries in February. But since then, he has gained two pounds, and he is now up to the 20th percentile in size. So we'll take it. Exciting. So we continue to pray for three-year-old Turner, and just pray he gains weight, and he continues to get healthy and recovers from his surgeries and multiple hospitalizations. It is with great sadness that I also share with you that, um, that yesterday I learned that uh, Jean Masadi, who's been a member of our church for 36 years, passed away. And so we pray for, um, for her children and for her grandchildren, and she is um, connected to other families in the church as well. And so we just pray for all of them as they grieve her passing. We also pray for William and for his mother, Nancy, and pray for all those who are on hospice. I didn't see all the prayer requests on Facebook, but I'm hoping that I got them all. I'm looking at people I know on Facebook. Let us be in a spirit of prayer. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot birthdays. I just want to highlight birthdays. For Kristen S., who is today, I'm looking at Art. This is his daughter. It's Kristen is today, Anne is tomorrow, Sarah M is Tuesday, Michelle G is Wednesday, and the 6th, Adeline is turning 10, oh, when, Michelle is Wednesday the 6th, Adeline is turning 10 on the 8th, Ashley B is turning 15, and Margaret is turning 26, both next Saturday. So that's lots of wonderful birthdays to celebrate this April. Now let us be in the spirit of prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for these birthdays that we can celebrate as a community. We give you thanks for wedding anniversaries, and we give you thanks for the baptism of Owen, for the love that surrounds him from you and from his family and friends and this church community. And we pray today, Lord, for all the children of our world, for those who are recovering from health difficulties, as well as those who are anticipating surgery, we pray for all children who have been forced to flee their homes, and we especially lift up the people of the Ukraine. Lord, we pray for peace in our world, as we also pray for our military and our veterans and our National Guard. Lord, in the silence of our hearts, we pray for all of those who are in need of healing prayer. We pray for those who are hospitalized this day, for them to go, we pray for those who are undergoing cancer treatments. We pray for all of their caregivers. And we also pray for those who are in hospice and those who are grieving the loss of their loved ones. In the silence of our hearts, Lord, hear our prayers. And we pray as well, Lord, for those who are housing and food insecure. We pray for those struggling with addiction, depression, mental illness, PTSD, chronic diseases, COVID, as we pray for our medical and teaching staffs. We also give you thanks, Lord, and pray for our parents, and we pray for our children, and we pray for all of those who do such a wonderful job taking care of us in your holy name. Lord, in the silence of our hearts, we lift up these prayers to you. And as we walk these days of spring, 
as we enter soon into Holy Week, we thank you, Lord, that you are with us on all the journeys of our lives. And we pray that whatever we are going through, that we might remember that you have blessed us and given us gifts and talents to share with the world. And so we give you thanks for our ability to share them with others as we give you thanks for the many blessings of our lives. We offer all these prayers to you. In Jesus' name, amen. church or another organization that shares God's hope and love with the world. In your bulletin, there are ways to give, and those who are online, you can give by visiting the firstchurchbristol.org website.
beloved children, and we are all invited by Jesus Christ to share in this holy meal of communion. Will you be with me in a spirit of prayer? Holy God, from the beginning of time, from the time that you have created us, you have walked with us and blessed us. And so we pray that you will bless this symbolic bread of life and that you will bless this cup that reminds us of your unconditional love. We pray that we might share in you and share your love with all the world. Amen. Now, I'm aware that it's still a little strange for communion that we're having saltines and water, and um, I always love hearing what people at home are having, you know, Oreos and orange juice and coffee and stuff like that. So, so if it helps you to enter in the sacrament better, I invite you to hold your, your saltine in your hand with you or your water in your hand and bless them with me. In the different items we use, oh, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his friends and disciples in an upper room, and he blessed the bread, and then he broke it, saying to all of them, this is my body, which shall be broken for you. Whenever you eat of this bread, remember me. And when the meal came to a close, he took a cup, and again he blessed it and gave thanks to God, and he said to them, this cup is a symbol of my blood, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of this cup, remember me. So in the different items that we use for communion, we remember that God has created us wonderfully unique. And as we join his communion meal, we remember that we are one united body in Christ. Please join me in sharing in the bread of life. United in Christ's love, we share in the cup of the new covenant the assurance of God's eternal and everlasting love. Thank you, God, for this simple and holy meal that reminds us that we are forever connected to you and to each other. And thank you for your love, which blesses us every day of our lives. Amen.
into your week knowing that God is love and that God loves you and that you will be God's instrument of peace and love in all the world. Go in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. Amen.